as a teenager I loved all the the Beatles type of pop music and everything and have spent forever you know in dance places and parties and doing rock and roll and that kind of thing. I've never danced only as a teenager with jiving I always loved jiving go jiving in London um, always loved dancing but I never did any sort of you know ballet or tap or anything that most families well girls expected to do I suppose I didn't come from the sort of background that had ballet lessons <laughs> but um but loved dancing loved jiving I'm 81 now, so I, at the time I was 78. And I thought, 78-year-old's dancing, she must be mad. Um, but I went along just for a laugh, and uh, I loved it from the moment, the, you know, the first moment, I absolutely loved it. I think one of the things you need to, to do this is actually to like people. And most, all of us, all of us feel like that, you know. Um, since we've been working together, We've become very close in a completely uh, strange way. It's this dance thing that's pulling us all into the same pocket, if you like. I was apprehensive at first, not about the performing, but about whether I could actually do it and whether I could actually remember the steps. I always liken it to the wonderful um, God, you know, reaching to Adam and his fingers. Not quite touching, <laughs> but the, the sort of tension going between these is enormous. And sometimes one feels this, it's like an electric current running through you and through the other people so that if you get into their, their space, you're aware of it immediately. The shapes, they've got to work. They can't just be, they've got to work as a shape. They've got to flow round to make it correct in my eyes. That's how I feel. Um, not straight, I don't like straight lines in gardens because nature doesn't grow in straight lines. Uh, cliche. <laughs> That was always in the background, making art and doing something that was other other than making a home or, you know, being these accepted forms of what woman should be in those times. Um, but the turning point was getting divorced and deciding I wanted a bit more than just being looking after the house. I wanted to try, and that's when I, I went in, you know, all out for the degree, which I had to give up a lot to do that. I had to live on a very small income. And um, so there was a drive in me to do that. It took a lot of energy. We rehearsed twice, at least twice a week, sometimes more. Um, and it's, um, you know, it's always on Saturday and always on Thursday evening. Um, and I've got used to that, this sort of regularity of it first. But to begin with, I, I found that quite difficult. Um, and it's a commitment in as much as you have to practice a bit, or certainly I do, otherwise I would never um, never be able to remember it all. And so it does impinge on one's life, on one's family, on um, the amount of times I can look after Jude, that sort of thing. We wanted to succeed. We all, we all desperately wanted to be good, and for people, you know, to to like and understand what it is we're doing, because the, you know, it's not just uh, like all good dance. It's telling people something or it's suggesting something, 
and we're trying to to, to convey that. A two-hour rehearsal is, is, you know, a good length of time, and we work physically very hard. And nobody is complaining about creaking joints or broken backs or legs or we've all got hips and knees and you know whatever health issues that you get when because nobody gets away with it completely in life so we've all got things we have to deal with but while we're doing this dancing it's fabulous and now we can sustain a five-hour rehearsal it's enlivening i feel sort of two years younger every, after, <laughs> after every rehearsal. Um, yeah. And when I tell people uh, yeah, that I'm rehearsing this afternoon, sorry, I can't, can't come out, I'm rehearsing this afternoon. They say, oh, what are you doing? And I think they assume that I'm in sort of amateur dramatics or something like that. And I say, oh, I'm part of a dance troupe. And their faces are a picture. <laughs> so um, people just don't expect you to be doing this at my age. Together with trying to get the steps right, together with trying to look as though we know what we're doing with these, uh, you know, somewhat decrepit old bodies, and trying not to crash into each other. You know, I mean, it's it's a kind of um, yeah, that's that's a lighthearted. But it is a very important thing we're trying to achieve. I think one becomes very close to people. Um, it, it's almost you become very intimate with the people you're dancing with, which um, it's not necessarily something that continues afterwards. But while you're actually with them, you absolutely love them. Um, and, in, and it's great, it's great. And I think that comes across in probably what we do, that, that we all like each other very much. It, it moves us quite strongly sometimes when we're all doing our bit together and it's working. And we get angry now and frustrated and, and snappy with each other when it isn't working. You know, it's, it's because we want to, to do the best that it's possible for us to do. We, we actually can f sort of, it's as if life, as if life goes right through you, right from here to your fingertips and you become sensitive. Um, you can become sensitive to where you're walking, how you put your feet. Uh, at least I feel that. Like. It's not so much a desire to, to do something glorious before you pass away, pass over, or pass under, or whatever you do. It's just that the ability is there to do it. That you're not in a rush. I don't know anybody who's in a rush to do something beautiful or, or creative. There seems to be a calmness about it when you get older, which actually allows more, more creativity in. You know, you're not under the pressures you were when you were younger.